to bring. So much. All right. This is 16 CR 1891 Come Up versus Bryce Rhodes. Appearances for the Come Up, please. Good afternoon, Your Honor. Elizabeth Jones Brown for Cunningham for the Commonwealth with Detective Aaron Tonelli from LAPD. Thank you. And for the defense, Ty Howard on behalf of Bryce Rhodes. And Tom Griffiths on behalf of Bryce Rhodes. Thank you all and good afternoon, Mr. Rhodes, to you. We are on for sentencing today. A pre sentence investigation report has been filed. Have you all had a chance to review that? Yes, Judge. And are there any changes or corrections that need to be noted? No, Your Honor. Thank you. All right. Um, is there anything that you would like to present before the court imposes sentence? We have no evidence to put on today, Judge. My understanding is that the Commonwealth has evidence, and we did want to make a brief statement to the court at the conclusion. Okay. Um, that would be out of typical order. Do you have any objection to proceeding that way? That's fine, Your Honor. We All just right. have two victim impact statements. All right. Thank you. You may proceed, Ms. Jones. Your Honor, the Commonwealth calls to Chastity Jones. Thank you. Um, now, Ms. Jones, you can um, come up here to the witness stand or you can come to the podium, whichever you prefer and feel more, feel more comfortable with, okay? Thank you, Yana. My name is Chastity Stoner. <clears throat> I am the mother of Christopher Jones, Jr. Christopher's uh, was my son's dad. Uh, first, I want to just thank the court for this opportunity. I also want to, um, this has been crazy. This has been painful for me and my family. Uh, but it, what, it, what it has not done, it has not took uh, my son down a path of destruction. So I'm thankful for that. Uh, I would love for the sentence to be upheld because what he did is just unthinkable. No one should have to do that. On the behalf of my son and my family, we forgive, but we forgive for ourselves. We don't forgive for him. We don't feel like he's remorseful or anything like that, but I do want the court to just uphill, you know, all the sentences, and I appreciate this. Um, I'm kind of nervous right now. It's fine. Because, I understand um, that. It's hurtful. <clears throat> my son turned 18 two days before his dad would have turned <laughs> 48. 18 years old. This happened when my son was 10. He just he just took him from my son's life. But we've persevered through some things. I'm super proud of my son and I'm going to call that out right now because my son got an um, a offer from the University of Louisville so he's going to play football. All right. So this man did not take that away from him. But he did take his dad. His dad didn't see his 18th birthday. He'll be graduating May the 25th from DuPont Manual. His dad won't be there to see that. So I just wanted the court to take all of that in consideration. When he left, he left another son behind, Byron. He left a sister, a brother behind. And for that, it angers me that somebody can just take a life. Two brothers, that's, that, that angers me, you know? So I just uh, thank you for this opportunity. And yeah, that's, that's all I have to say. Well, I um, appreciate you being here so much. Does yeah. the defense have any questions for her? No, Your Honor. Does Jones Graham have any questions? No. All right. Um, you are rightfully very proud of your son. Please pass along to him that I'll be keeping my eyes out for him. Thank and you. I'm also very proud of him. Thank, Thank you for you. being here. Thank you. Anyone else for the come along? Yes, should we call Jackie for tea? Thank you. Thank you for this opportunity. Oh, I've been waiting seven years, seven long years for this. This day, that trial on December the eighth. I mean, the, the on December the eighteenth, when they found Bryce Rose guilty. Miss Jones was looking down. It made three years for that lady's death. But she was looking down on her baby to see for justice for him. And she got it. And we all got it that day. And just to be clear, you're talking about Christopher's mom, right? Yes, I'm talking about Christopher's mother. Yes. 
and uh, for that mother to say, uh, the, the that that mother, Mr. Jones's baby's mama's, her son is playing football. Little Larry played football, and uh, he didn't get the chance to finish. Lula Reese wanted music, and he took that from them. 14 and 16 years old. You know, I sat in this courtroom and listened to everything, even to the corner. What something I had kept playing in my mind all along, but the corner confirmed it. But when one point, that one point that he did to my grandkids, it, it just took me right there. How you just mutilated them like an animal, you know, and, and then throw white castle boxes all around them, just like they were trash. They wasn't trash. They was a human beings, and they loved life. Little Larry and, them, and little Reese, they, they was good boys, very good boys. They went to school, everything. You know, it's just, I just can't understand why and how he can just take Mr. Jones's life a man walking down the street and just take his life like it's nothing. You know, but uh, God say vengeance is man's who says the Lord because, you know, I, I do go to church. I'm in church. I've been in church all my life and that's where I raised my kids in, church. But I do want to say this. I would like to have a copy of his uh, medical records over across the bridge and over here too for my son, little Larry Nim's dad. Little Larry's dad is going through this really hard because he's not here to help, wasn't here to protect his own child because of another judge in Christian County wasn't here to protect his child neither one of his children but you know the things that I wanted to say to uh, Mr. Rose it was somebody in my house that knew him in school in school and I, this came this came about, and this man told me that he knew him while they was in school. Said he was a, a nicest guy, quiet, played football, and he just couldn't believe the way he turned out. And you know, and and I just I was just stunned when this guy told me this. I didn't even know this guy. He was doing some work. And, and it just came about. But I do hope he finds, so you can find the Lord in, in anywhere, anywhere. And I hope he do find Jesus while he's back in, while he's in, in the uh, prison and, and not in jail. It's a difference. But I don't know, you know, I don't know, but I just do, I just know for little Larry and little Reese not to be here. When little Larry was born, I was there when little Larry was born. Weighed seven pounds and 11 ounces. And not to even there to protect my own baby my babies but I don't know there are, there are not perfect words for this situation I think that you've done a great job of speaking for Larry and Maurice and I appreciate you being here thank you thank you
Any questions for the witness? No, Judge. Thank you. Any other witnesses for the panel? No, Your Honor. Mr. Griffiths. Judge, given the trial that we all were present for, that we all sat through and we all did our job, uh, we understand the court doesn't really have discretion to do uh, to deviate from the jury's verdict in a situation like this. The jury handed down a sentence, and we understand the court is going to impose that sentence. We do believe that um, by operation of law that those sentences should run concurrent. We would ask the court to impose them concurrently, and we do intend to file an appeal in this case. And that's our statement for the court. Thank you. Ms. Jones-Brown, does the Commonwealth um, wish to have any response in regards to the request that the sentences run concurrently by law? Uh, Judge, I think that's the way the law works, uh, but we would ask the court to follow the, um, the recommendation of the jury as to each count of murder being life without the possibility of parole. I think they will merge into a concurrent sentence, um, but nevertheless, he will not be eligible for parole. I know everybody here remembers the whole trial and, and knows why that is appropriate, and we would ask the court to follow that. All right. Um, the attorneys are correct that the court does not have um, discretion to run these sentences anything but concurrent. The, the reason for that is um, multiple, but, but particularly because in Kentucky, uh, a life sentence without the opportunity of probation or parole really means that and um, and so obviously you know you can't have life upon life upon life there's only one life here we're talking about and that's Mr. Rhodes life um, I, I, I will tell you all that uh, this has been by far one of the most tragic cases I've ever been involved in um, and uh, as someone who has um, represented many people charged with murder myself uh, and having been involved in a lot of tragic cases this one is it really stands out for how profoundly sad it is on every level um, you know with Mr. Jones it's just the fact that it wasn't even the right person that, that they thought they were looking for uh, is so profoundly sad. Um, with Maurice and Larry, there, you know, the fact that they were so young is so sad. It's so sad that the police had to resort to sending out sketches before anyone realized that they were gone and identified them. That is tragic. Tragic. And that deserves being said. Everything about this case is horrific. And when I came on the bench, it was very important to me to get this case tried, to get a resolution for everyone on both sides. It needed to be done. And I, um, I am satisfied that it is done and it is over and that justice has been served and that the jury was in the absolute best position to determine what the appropriate sentence should be. Uh, and that this jury worked very hard and very emotionally to, to come to what they felt was a just verdict. I believe it would be a dishonor to change that in any way. Uh, and so the court will follow the recommendation of the jury in line with the law and impose a sentence of life without parole. Is there anything else for today? All right, thank you all. Sure. On or off record.